It's the McFarlane Toys Gold Label DC Multiverse Customizing Action Figure Time with your host Greg Wyke from BeyondComics.tv. That's right guys, I'm going to paint this up here and make it look really cool and detailed. I have a bunch of ideas I'm going to throw into this. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Tricity. This is the action figure I created and it is available right now at TB League Fison Toys. Uh, you can get it on eBay or on my website at beyondcomics.tv. It's fully posable, 28 points of articulation, seamless synthetic skin. Uh, really, really kind of cool. It has a titanium steel skeleton with a uh, spine inside it and everything. So hope you guys enjoy that. My previous figure sold out, co-created by writer Brandon Wilson and me, the artist Greg White. Cleo, this is starring Ice-T's wife Coco as the goddess of seduction. And this is Tricity, goddess of thunder, lightning, and electricity. That's right, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get back to the customizing. So after careful inspection, you can see there's a tremendous amount of really cool detail on this figure. So uh, just taking a close look, it'll be really cool to bring out the highlights um, right over here in the pants and the boots and the muscle structure of the body, even the details up close on the eyes. So there's a lot of fun stuff that can be done here. So we'll try to get to this right away. And again, you can see the gold label uh, McFarlane Toys figure created by my former boss, Todd McFarlane. And you can see the video of uh, Todd McFarlane and I uh, talking that we shot together uh, when he first hired me to draw the double page poster spread in Image Comics issue number 30. That was my first official published work. Uh, in Spawn, which was really exciting back when I was a kid in school. <laughs> and that was my first paid job. And again, Todd McFarlane and I talk about it together live on video. So if you want to check that out, check out the video uh, in my description links. Okay. And let's get to customizing. Okay, here we go, guys. So let's start <clears throat> over here. <clears throat> I'm going to get this black paint which I will show you in a minute, but I just want to put this on before it dries and get that in there and then basically just wipe it right off. And then once you, you do that, see how it gets into the, look how beautiful it is. It gets right into the crevices and then just kind of like you wipe off the remaining part. You could even go in here and like just kind of pull it down a little bit to get like a nice little, um, nice little look in there and then wipe it right off kind of dab it push into those crevices so that it kind of has a nice nice look and you could wet the towel and kind of uh, push it in there as well it's, it's really deep actually so it's a little harder than i thought but i didn't want such a hard black line in there so i'm just kind of like damping it up which is nice. It gives it kind of like a nice little airbrush look to it like that. So you take a look there. So it looks like a lot smoother in there. I'm going to just remove these swords for the moment. Uh, let's get a little bit more black paint in here. And uh, for those of you wondering, that's the black paint that I'm using there, the acrylic heavy body. All right. Uh, again, wipe off the remnants of it and just kind of stick it in there. So you guys kind of see what I'm doing over here. And um, I'm working on a whole bunch of new comic books, by the way. So you could see some previews of it at beyondcomics.tv if you get a chance to take a peek. Uh, need a little bit more under here. And in the fabric creases that are beautifully sculpted uh, this is one of the better sculpted figures that they have. Um, if you haven't seen the other video, check it out. You can see my customized Superman video using that, uh, gosh, I forget, I'm forgetting what, he's, what it's called. Not Bizarro Superman, but a different, um, I think, Infected Superman or whatever they called it. Uh, or Deceased Superman or something. Um, no, 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 I think it was the Infected one from the McFarlane Toys line. 
Uh, but yeah, you can check that out. I'll show you guys after. Okay, so right here, look at that. That already just pops the muscles out, you know? And even looking up close, it looks like a little bit maybe too tight. But from a distance, nah, it looks really good. Because remember, like, when you see this figure, it's a, it's a seven inch figure. You know what I mean? So it just gives it like a really nice detail. I'm just kind of wiping off the excess there. Uh, let me, hold on, I'm just getting some more paint. Okay, whoops. And over here, hold on, pop this in here. This is, this is rough. This is going to be rough here, but it's right in there. Kind of blop it in and then wipe it off. A lot of people use shoe polish, um, but I just really like using the acrylic paint because you have a little bit more kind of control over the look you're going for. Um, here we go. All right, I'm, gonna take, I'm taking this off here. All right, cool. Let's get this side. You see, I'm kind of paintbrushes knocking into the camera. It's a long paintbrush. And you kind of, you got to hurry because, you know, like it dries really quick, the, the acrylic paint. Um, so, yeah. And then in this case here, um, I know like some customizers take apart their figures and I've had to do that sometimes. Like I did that with that Superman one I was telling you about. But um, in this case, this is, this is pretty good right over here. I don't think you really need to. You can stretch it out pretty decently without needing to do that since it's more highlight shading that we're going for in here. Okay, let's wipe that off fast. Man, this stuff is drying quick. Okay. Yeah, but that, see, that has such a good look. Man, that has a good look. Look at that. It's really cool. I'm kind of putting like, a, a, just kind of dampen, I dampen this really quick. I'm using a very special liquid called my tongue. <laughs> Ew, I know. <clears throat> but I mean, like really, you know, as long as you have some kind of like, you know, uh, water that you pop on it, it should be uh, good enough. Now I just want to drench the brush here in the paint, which I'm doing on the side. And just kind of coming in here a little bit more and then wiping it off and then kind of checking out the detail on the side here on his side i'm going to turn the figure like that and then just kind of blop this black paint in here okay and then very skillfully wipe down in the opposite direction of the sculpt see so then the top is wiped off the bottom leaves the shadow that's why we're doing it that way go over the second time okay and kind of just trust what you're doing here again this is water soluble paint so you know if worse comes to worse you could wash it off all right um in the comments, people have asked, do I use a sealer? Not usually, um, you know, but I'm not planning to be extremely rough with the posability of the figure. So I don't think that's necessarily needed in this case, though it could come in handy. Um, yes, it could scrape off if handled roughly. Um, let's get a little bit 
of that here. There, look at that, guys. It looks really cool. All right. And, like, in person, too, like, it blends really well. You know, like, on camera, you know, you're seeing it so close up. But, you know, if you look, it's very subtle from a distance. When you look super close, that's when you start to see some of the, the details, you know. But, but again, it, it's so, it's brought out so nicely, you know, with this stuff. I should, I should probably show Todd this um, next time I see him. Uh, Todd McFarlane. You know, it'd be cool, like, if he had me design some figures. Because I have, I have, like, one of the coolest designs for Batman and Spider-Man that I have never seen anybody do before. Um, I released a preview of my uh, design that could be thought of as Spider-Man uh, in the book Regards Ditko, um, which are the letters that were written to Jason uh, Chawala and um, Steve Ditko, uh, his correspondence with the co-creator of Spider-Man, the artist Steve Ditko, uh, who I also met, and I posted a video when I met Steve God rest his soul, what a wonderful guy he was. Really, really nice to me. Really, really nice um, nice man. And an honor to meet Stan Lee and Steve Ditko separately, uh, both the creators of Spider-Man. Uh, as, as well with Jack Kirby, who um, is not really officially credited, but he absolutely contributed. And I did a whole video about how he contributed beyond doing the cover of Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, for Spider-Man. So check out that video too, guys. Um, you might enjoy it. Okay, let me just fix this here. Boy, it's so hard to do this and like, you know, pay attention to the camera while I'm trying to customize. It's actually not easy. Okay. See, a little bit too much got wiped off there. Let me... Dab the paint again. Try to find that sweet spot. Right there. There it is. That's what I wanted to do. Cool. Okay. There we go. All right, by the way, guys, share the video if you would, please. I'm so close to getting 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, so that would be awesome um, if you guys can share the video or post it so that other people will take a peek and maybe subscribe. Um, if I can get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll have access to the YouTube offices here in New York, um, which would be really cool, and then maybe I could shoot something like in a nice production studio or something cool like that. Um, Okay. Actually, some of your uh, some of the most famous YouTubers actually shoot there, so that would be cool. So I'm like I'm like at a little over eight thousand subscribers, and thank you guys for that. So if um, if you don't mind to subscribe, um, it'll help. Thanks everybody. Here we go. So there, that that's pretty much done. Um, let's try to go into these awesome looking arms. Uh, Okay, let's try to get the these ratchet joints are awesome. They're very tight. A little too tight, actually, but really good. I really love this design um, that McFarlane came up with with Batman. I just, I just think it looks cool, you know? And I like the shine. I actually put a shine on the Grim Knight Batman. Uh, and I like that you could kind of see the nose there and then kind of, you know, have it covered based on the angle. Of the figure. Um, yeah, Todd, is, Todd did a good job on this. Okay, hold on one second. Mm, get more paint. This is, this is going to be challenging because the cape. Uh, that's all right. Just trying to get it into those muscles. And let me wipe it off in the opposite direction. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. See, and then that, that really brings out the highlight of the crease of the muscle in the anatomical structure of the shoulder. Okay. 
<clears throat> I love doing this because it's like my um, it's like my meditation, you know. So it's like a very peaceful, like um, Bob Ross would always say, painting a little happy tree, <laughs> you know. Um, it's like that for me. So, um, and guys, you know, some of you have sent me some of your customized figures, which is really cool. So, um, yeah, please keep those links coming. Um, and please post your customized, uh, figures. I really enjoy seeing that. Okay. Here we go. Um, also guys, uh, I did a whole video on the firing of Gina. Um, what's her last name? Carrara or something from, um, uh, or Car Carano or something from, um, Mandalorian. I really would like your opinions on that um, with the whole cancel culture thing. Like, even though she did inappropriate stuff that I don't agree with, I don't, I don't think it means that she should lose her job and the character that she portrays in Mandalorian should be deleted from history. I mean, Hasbro canceled the action figure from Mandalorian of her, the new one, um, which is like just, I don't know, I just think it's wrong. I think it's like a witch hunt, you know? Let let people have their, you know, opinion, even if it's backwards or wrong or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you have to fire them just because you disagree with them. Um, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that. Just educate. And I think we need to have a more forgiving culture. By the way, I'm just painting um, a little, extending this into the non-sculpted area of the figure just so that, you know, it kind of blends a little nicer, hides those joints, even though you probably won't see it. It's kind of nice to just, like, add that in. But, yeah, guys, let me know what you think about that. Like, do you actually think that, um, you know, people's lives should be, you know, like a smear campaign or a witch hunt, like where they just, you know, don't produce the figures, they erase the character that the actor portrayed they just you know i just think it's overboard it doesn't do anything good and why is it that she can't have a platform to say her piece even though we disagree with what she said and even though it was a little you know ignorant or a little bit you know or even a lot inappropriate and you know there are people online that really are you know they're inciting violence and hate and those are the people i think should be canceled or fired the ones that incite violence you know not an actress who's like you know one of many actors on a tv show you know that's crazy i don't know it just seems unbalanced to me but but give me your opinion guys i'm really open to, to hearing your thoughts um i think communication is truly key when it comes to this stuff to avoid misunderstanding, you know, people generally speaking, are very judgmental. Um, and I think it's important before we, you know, start making these mass sweeping generalizations or judgments that we, you know, actually get to the bottom of the information and listen to both sides. And then we can make our own judgment, you know, and have our opinions. That's fine. But, um, but let's not attack you know, let's let's not attack one another. Let's try to, you know, defend uh, when necessary. But I don't think we need to go out and attack and tear down and smear. Because then, 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 you know, if we do that, don't we become the bullies? You know what I mean? Um, again, if it's a hate group, yeah, yeah, stop the hate groups, 100%. You know, 100%. That's an open and shut case. But an actress or an actor who just says something that's a little inappropriate or effed up, you know, okay, now we know who they are and where they come from. Now let's, you know, try to take some time and educate them and see if they're open to learning and growing. You know, people are oftentimes a work in progress like this. And we're just trying to, um, you know, all survive life and also try to live it a little as well. So again, if people say inappropriate stuff, I mean, my God, I think back to when I was younger, I didn't know anything, you know? I believed whatever I heard or what was told. I didn't know people lie or make stuff up. I didn't know what a conspiracy was. I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. So it took time for me to learn and grow up and understand life and culture and, 
you know, differences and everything. And, you know, but, but I had like a real interest in trying to, you know, grow as a person. And I guess some people, some people, I guess, don't, um, you know, they just want to be right or they just want to win or they just want to beat the other person versus trying to come to a resolution. So again, just spouting out some philosophy here, but, um, but I know when I was younger, you know, I just didn't understand. I thought there's good guys and bad guys and that's it. I didn't know there was gray areas. So let me know about you guys, uh, in, in your growth and growing up and understanding, you know, did you have a similar experience? Um, let me know, you know, I was shocked that, you know, what politicians and lawyers, you know, and different people are not all a hundred percent honest. What? You know, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know. I just, I was just shocked. I was just really, I, you know, I didn't know. Um, but when you start figuring stuff out and saying, hey, you know, that doesn't really make sense. And what's going on? Aren't we like kind of all just like one race, the human race? You know, like when you start to kind of have these epiphanies, you know, and realize, you know, all this stuff. And you see like some people like don't get that, you know, like, well, let's, let's educate those people. Let's try to explain to them so that we have, you know, more understanding and less, less wars. You know what I mean? And, um, <clears throat> that's my two cents. You know, I also think a lot of people like that are good are misguided sometimes. By the way, I'm just kind of, again, trying to highlight the shadows of the muscles here. But they're misguided and they think they're doing something good. But in reality, they um, they may be like making an error on, uh, in judgment, depending on the circumstances, you know. So, checks and balances, you know, making sure the source material is factual before making, you know, judgments and leaping to conclusions. But, you know, generally speaking, people have always been like kind of gossipy. So it's it's hard not to say, oh my God, guess what I just found out? Or, you know what I mean? And sharing that information. <clears throat> but, um, but, you know, people get hurt from that. So we got to be mindful. Um, and also like when it comes to guns and stuff, I think there's a problem there too, because like a lot of people are trying to get guns out of the hands of like normal, healthy, psychologically sound people. <clears throat> but really it's the illegal guns that are being, you know, traded and, you know, being, um, you know, uh, carried on by criminals who rob and steal. Those are the ones that they should be focusing on getting off the streets first. You know, then have a psych evaluation, like a really good one, before you just give a gun or a weapon of any sort to anybody. Make sure that they're psychologically sound, you know, test them. <clears throat> Make sure that they're not going to go on some crazy, you know, harmful spree hurting people. But I think, you know, generally speaking, a lot of people are just normal and just want to protect, you know, themselves. Like, you know, not everybody lives in a apartment building with a doorman, you know, in the city. Some people are very vulnerable. But also some people are like very trigger happy and you don't want trigger happy people to have guns. You know what I'm saying? You want people who are responsible and take it seriously and <clears throat> understand how to lock it away so that children can't access it. You know, you want to be cautious of that. Um, but I believe very strongly that there's a lot of hypocrisy, like a lot of hypocrisy going on, even with the pandemic and everything like that. Like a lot of stuff doesn't make sense, you know, like don't have social gatherings because you could spread it unknown, like unknowingly, but then they have like massive social gatherings that they don't think is a problem. Why? Because that was a fun social gathering. So it's like, you know, if social gather gathering is dangerous, then, you know, it, it should kind of be <clears throat> for any type of social gathering, not just some stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like when I went to the tree, for Christmas, Rockefeller Center area to check it out. 
there was mass crowding around that area. And um, I was just shocked, like, that that wasn't, you know, like, that's, like, if somebody's sick, like, they could really spread it there, you know? And I know, like, a lot of people are trying to pretend that, like, wearing a mask is a political issue. It's not. It's just science. You know, if someone coughs and you cover it with a mask, uh, then you're blocking it. You know, you're, you're helping reduce the spread. It may not be 100%, depending on the thickness of the fibers of the mask, but it's doing some good. <clears throat> anyway, these are just some, you know, thoughts that I'm saying out loud. I'm curious what your thoughts are. If you agree or disagree, no problem. Interested to hear your thoughts. I'm not trying to <clears throat> push any agenda one way or another. Um, I think that people having difference of opinions sometimes helps balance the world and maybe helps find <clears throat> that happy medium. Okay, let's get back to painting here. So here's this part of the legs. All right, so we want to kind of like, um, I feel like we need to <clears throat> like wet that a little bit, but okay, here we go. Get that in there really quick. Nice and messy. Okay, and then let's wipe down against the grain. Nice little wet tissue there. And that's getting a little bit of shading. But you know what? I'm actually going to wipe this off because I can do this better. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do it again. Hold on. So I have my little water here, which I mixed here. And I'm going to try that again. Uh, this time, uh, it's much more watery. Okay, I'm getting that in there. And then I'm taking the dried paper towel and doing a quick wipe down. Okay, there we go. See, now you can kind of see it getting in the grooves there and the shading of the sculpt of the leg, which has a nice, a nice look to it. All righty. By the way, guys, I hope that none of you are offended by the different controversial things I was bringing up. I was just talking out loud. And just would like your opinions, because I try to read the comments. Um, you know, hold on one second. Let me just put this here. And I also try to respond to some of them when possible. Here we go. All right. I know, like, a lot of people are scared to talk about this stuff, you know. And it's, like, it's okay. Like, we're just having open dialogue, you know. Not pushing any agenda or nothing. We're just talking. It's just people communicating. So, you know, everybody chill out. Let's all try to just have open dialogue and learn from one another, you know? Like, aren't we all here trying to figure everything out, right? Okay. Here we go. There we go. I think that's coming into the creases of the clothing pretty good. So I'm going to get a little bit more under there. Take a look at that. Pretty good. See, it's very subtle, but it does the trick. A little dry brush over here. Okay, if you guys want me to customize any figures, let me know. Um, also, I, I got uh, hired to uh, customize some figures for some, some of you guys. So if you guys uh, want me to do that, you know, just... Um, you know, uh, post a message and, um, you know, you just send me the figure and then, you know, I'll just, you know, charge for like time and paint and stuff, you know, and maybe I could help customize 
uh, depending on what it is, maybe, you know, like, I don't know, like 99 bucks or something like that, depending on, you know, the level of detail that's needed. If you need like head swaps or whatever, um, or like little touch up paints. Uh, and of course, depending on the, the time, my schedule is like crazy busy, but I do try to help when I can. Okay. There, that's pretty good. Uh, there's like a little crease of sculpt here, so I'm just going to kind of pop that in there. Along the anatomical line, wet the tissue and just pull down on it. And then kind of paint it right back in. Wiped off too much. There. So it's cool to like see, like, if you compare the legs, you know, without the paint on the left versus here on the right. So that's not bad. Um, let's see what else. I guess right in here. There's a little bit there. Let me wipe it off. All right, cool. Whew. Now let's get the uh, the other side. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. And then wipe it off. It's very satisfying when you wipe it off correctly. The stem of this brush is long, so it keeps knocking into the camera. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. If you guys are just tuning in, please make sure to follow and subscribe. Again, this is comic book artist, writer, and director Greg Wyke from beyondcomics.tv. Wyke like like. <laughs> um, here we go. And yes, it's Greg, G-R-A-I-G. -A, a lot of people keep saying, do you mean Craig? I'm like, nah, I really do mean Greg. <laughs> that's really how I was named. <laughs> My parents figured out that spelling. Um, which is funny, actually. It was um, based on a baseball player. Based on a baseball player. Um, Greg Nettles. Uh, who my mom didn't even know, but she was vacuuming and... Um, wanted to name me Graham, but was afraid children in school would call me Graham Cracker because kids could kind of be mean like that sometimes. And she knew that. So she's like, well, I can't call him Greg because that's egg and they'll call him Greg egg or something. So what should I do? And it said up to bat TV in the background, Greg Nettles, G-R-A-I-G. She's like, that's it. Ta-da. The birth of my spelling of my name. <laughs> okay, here we go. And then some of the detail here in the muscles. And then wipe off the highlighted parts of those muscles, leaving the shading in the shadows. Boom. Okay. It's a little rough, but not too bad. So 
Those little dimples there in the buttocks area. Just wet this part to smooth it out just a little bit more. Not too shabby. And we have some of the back muscles, which are really nice. Like, I'm really glad that the back muscles are, in fact, sculpted in there. Um, let me try to see what I can do with it. And, and again, like, you can't see it here, but if you just tilt it with the light, then you could kind of start to see the shadows appear. Okay, cool, and then we wipe it off. And again, you want to go to the opposite way of the ridges of the body in order to not wipe off the deep crevices, but only the highlights, uh, which is kind of the opposite, like when you're dry brushing highlights on. Um, but in this case, we're dry brushing the, the shaded parts, the embedded shadows. Let's see how that kind of looks here. Okay. Not too bad. Just want to try to get a little bit uh, better definition in these muscles. It's really subtle right here, but it's, it's sculpted in there. So if you just pay attention carefully, you can see them. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Good, good uh, look. That has like a really nice look. Oh, um, let's see. Shading the face might be a little bit risky, but we can play with it and see. Um, with that, I might actually try to paint it a little bit um, more gently. Uh, let me see what brushes I have that may work for that. This is good. Okay, hold on one second. <coughs> Let's see what we can what we can do here mm, mixing paint right now I think that's not bad this is gonna be rough try one side See how it looks. Mm. Not terrible. It's not terrible. I'll be a little bit more gentle with my hands. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, oh man. Let's see if I could uh, loosen that up a little bit with some more water. I'm trying to blend it. It's so small, you know? But um, give like a little five o'clock shadow. Might look cool. 
Not not too heavy. This is very watery right now, but I think that's gonna help it blend well. Oh yeah, that looks actually really good. That, that actually came out kinda good. Um, it may look like not great up close, but I mean, at this, at this distance compared to the size of my hand here, it like, it's like kind of like phenomenal detail in something so small. Okay. So I think we're good with this now on to the little micro details, which, um, will be very interesting to see how we pull that off in a second. So let me get the other brush again here. And uh, this actually might be too big. Let me get a smaller brush. So here, uh, you know, I'm just going to put black over this brown pouch. Okay. And then very quickly wipe it off like super fast. Okay. And that should just get the highlights right where you want them. Yeah, take a look at that, guys. I'm just fixing it up a little bit, but... See, versus like where you can't see any detail, then versus this where now we brought out the highlights. <clears throat> so I think that looks cool. Um, that's pretty straight on black. I'm not, I'm not really um, watering it down or anything like that. Okay. Just noticed a little something here I wanted to fill in. A little uh, groove in the sculpt of the costume design there. There, that's better. Okay, back to the pouches. Okay, and then we're going to do the other side. Ta-da! There, just did it quickly. All right, I think that um, just to save some time because you get the idea here, so don't want to make you guys sit through all of that. And then uh, we're going to do this part next over here. Right there. Boom, there we go. Gave that some nice little highlights. As you can see. Okay, cool. Let's get to the next part. Oh yeah, and I, I shaded this little yellow thing, whatever that is. Now I'm going to try this uh, just to highlight um, the little creases in here. Boom, there we go. Just finished that. Uh, I'm just running out of space here on the camera, but I just highlighted those little crevices in there. Okay. Now we're switching to the highlight paint over here. A uh, nice little uh, iridescent bright silver, okay? Okay, so putting that silver on, we're just gonna kind of brush this onto the highlighted parts. So in this case, we're trying to bring out the details here with a little dry brush. So you look, look at how nice that looks. See, this one compared to the flatness of that, okay? So this, this has a really nice look. Um, kind of just, again, very, very subtle highlights. It's 
It's really cool. It's kind of like like a little kind of like gunmetal look to it, which I think blends nicely. Um, okay, I would say that's good enough. Let's get a little bit more. We'll do the other side over here. It's kind of catching the edges. So, you know, the, the way that I'm brush stroking here is very important to achieve this look. It's not as random as it appears. It's very intentional, actually. See, so once you get used to it, you can do it fast. You trust the, the rhythm of your brush stroke. Look at that. Caught it really nice. See? Just brings out all those highlighted details that are in the sculpt, but that you can't really see without um, you know doing that. So, see, it still looks dark, but it has, like, a nice highlighted finish. Then uh, you want to do the same thing here with, like, the belt. These, these, these little things here, these little pouches. Wow, look how fast it just brought out the detail. So subtle, and it's just perfect. Boom. You know, boom. And uh, same thing here. Let me just get a little more paint on there. But, you know, again, like, there's not a lot of paint on this. I'm kind of, you know, just, what you're not, I, I think you can see me kind of mixing there. So I'm just kind of putting paint on and then kind of, like, blopping it off. So there's very little left on the actual brush. I'm going in one direction, which is down. And you know what? I'm just going to catch a little bit of this to bring that out a little bit, too. Look at that. See? Now the detail is, like, popping. Wow, that looks cool. Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Look how fast. I mean, that's like really, really nice. It's really nice detail. And this little part of the belt here. Cool. Nailed it. Oh, this is going to be dope. Look at this part over here. Let's get a little bit more paint on. And kind of brush it off. It's a little too much. Swipe it off. There we go. And kind of carry it through to the back of this belt. Boom. Let's get over here with these little bombs. Wow. That really brings out the bombs. Put a little bit of that in here. I kind of like... Um, Rusting the edges of the pouch. Look at that. That looks really cool. I mean, there's detail that just popped out of here that I didn't even notice. Those bombs really, really pop now. And the pouch, too, like with that little detail on the pouch. So I kind of dig that. I think I'll put that in the rest of the pouches. 
It's very subtle. Just like a quick little dash over it. Yeah, I dig that. It looks kind of cool. Makes it look a little bit more unified. Wipe a little bit of it off. And pop a little bit back in the top. There we go. All right, cool. Yeah, that works. That really works. Um, this is going to be interesting here. The gauntlets. I think we can have some fun with this too. It's cool because you kind of gave them spawn gauntlets, <laughs> which works really well. Just kind of like highlight it up. See, versus nothing, and now that, which looks kind of cool. Okay. Really nice uh, detail here. Let's get the other side. Wow, that, that figure is really looking good. All right, cool. Okay. It's rough because this paint dries like almost instantly, so you have to go fast and make sure you know what you're doing when you get in there. Even though it's like I'm kind of winging this, you know, I still have to like make a decision right away and then commit to it properly when applying this paint. Um, there we go. Yep. And I think um, something that'll look really cool. Let me just fix that. We got a little bit of paint here on the emblem, which I'm not touching. I like the emblem as is. Um, we could probably get a little highlight on here, just a little bit. It's very subtle, but see, it kind of brings it out a little. I'm a little scared to do, but let's try it. In this case, we want to kind of get on the tip of the brow. It's not bad. Still a little too much. Very, very subtle. Very subtle. This is really more of like painting it in. Line's a little too harsh. There we go. 
It's really, really subtle. It just basically brings it out a little bit more. And then um, this should be fun here, the armband. All right. Okay, there's little pouches here. Wow, look how nice that came out. All right, cool. So yeah, I think we're good to go there. Uh, Cape-wise, maybe just on this little edge here. Put a little bit of silver on there. Not too much, but it looks kind of cool like that. Kind of bring it out very subtly. Cool. So that just kind of gives it like a little bit of a sharpness to the point of it here. Um, hold on, I need to get a little bit more paint. There we go. These little tips kind of almost like made for these highlights in here. Okay. Looks really cool. Nice. And then finally. Right here, let's nail this. Damn, that was a mistake. Hold on. The slippery piece. Okay. Yep, that looks pretty good. This naturally has a little bit of a... Um, little bit of a, a gold sheen to it 
Um, so that's why I don't want to put too much silver, but just enough to bring out like the subtle details. But it's predominantly has little gold highlights already naturally in it. Okay. Cool. I think we're done, guys. So let's pop this on here like so and over the eyes and on the forehead wham here we go let's put these knives back in place and I think we have a completed customized Batman McFarlane style gold label figure series. Here we go, guys. What do you think? Put out. All right. Kind of looks uh, more like the painting, right? Like more like the drawing. This kind of painted look that he has here. Um, I wish he gave credit to the artist who painted this. It just is based on Todd McFarlane's design. But it doesn't say the artist who actually painted that. Which would have been nice to know. Um, would have been nice to know who painted that. Um, this is cool. Like honestly this gives me some ideas about. You know even painting like little blue highlights. Because you see like it's like a little bit of blue in there and like a little bit of purple in here. Um, which could look cool. So guys, I'm actually going to put like a little blue on here. Just to see how that looks. It's very subtle blue. But, uh, but I like it. You know, it kind of gives it a little bit of a touch of pizzazz, if you will. Um, the very uh, subtle kind of blue gouache on here. And actually, gouache is the wrong word. Um, it's like a nice little kind of watered down highlight effect. Um, I don't know if you could see it, but it's it's a light blue. It's a really pretty color blue, too. Shoes, I got it on me. Shoot. Uh, there you go, I got a little bit on the face. Kind of see how pretty it looks on here. I actually really like this. I'll actually put it on the cape too. It gives it like a nice little little blue highlight. So subtle. And um, the blue paint that I am using is this right here. Turquoise deep. Okay. Um, but yeah, I kind of like this. Let's see. 
looks really, looks really cool. Wow, it's like super subtle, but like your eye kind of detects the blue very lightly, which gives it like a nice little bit of blue. It's more like the box art, you know, if you look at that. Yeah, that's really cool. It's like kind of almost like a gunmetal with blue highlights. Can you guys make that out? See, it's like kind of tints it with a little bit of blue in there. So I, did, I definitely I can't really think that works. Wow. Like really cool look. Because it's like it's almost black, but you can see the blue in there. And that gives it a nice, uh, really nice feel to it here. I'm just going to put a little bit in the gray, just a little bit. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a... Oh, that's so nice. Guys, I don't know if you can see this, but like it really gives it a nice, like a blue-gray tone. Oh, I hope it's coming out on camera. Wow, that looks really cool. Can you guys see that? It just kind of ever so slightly tinted the gray, ever so slightly gray-blue. There we go. And you know what? If I mix a little bit of this here and a little bit of silver, see, and just, just so you could see it's pure color. That's the blue. Um, let me see if I can get just a little. There we go. See what that does. Putting like a little bit of chrome in there, just a little, uh, not chrome, but a little bit of silver. Yeah, that looks really cool. Wow, you know, this is like so unexpected. I, I really didn't expect this. So it's a really nice surprise. This is kind of working out. Oh, shoot. I effed up the face. Hold on. Some of it got on the face. Damn it. Okay. Wow, I don't, dude, can you see this, guys? This is super dope. This is like a black blue. Oh man, that looks cool. Wow. As it's drying, I'm just kind of going over it again to even it out. Man, that looks really cool. It's much more like his painting, actually. It's like almost black, right? But when the light hits it, boom. And it also pops out that black bat logo on his chest, the emblem. Um, let's go back in here. Ah, cool. This actually came out super cool. <laughs> Isn't it nice that like something like as simple as this could like bring joy? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, man, the cape looks much better like this. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. Super cool. Oh, 
awesome. I highly recommend getting into art, everybody. Some form of art. It's good. Keeps you out of trouble. Especially when you're younger, right? I used to teach art classes. I started teaching art classes back when I was 15 years old. Can you believe that? Wow, so young. Um, but like there were some inner city kids who couldn't afford to take it. So I would just have them come for free, you know? And um, some of them really grew up to be like amazing artists. Amazing artists. Um, some of you guys might even know the um, gr famous graffiti artist Faust. He goes by Faust. Um, so uh, Matt, he was my art student. Great artist. He does really cool stuff. Okay. Wow, looks really cool. Uh, that came out pretty tight. Nice. Yeah, it's really subtle. It looks subtle and good. And then, um, get this here. Just blowing on it to help it dry quicker because this is wet. You don't want any water spots. Okay. There, that's good. There we go, guys. That is finished. There we go. Cool. And let's put on the headgear. Definitely think it looks good up. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please make sure to follow and subscribe. Share with your friends. Guys, this has been comic book artist, writer, and director Greg Wyke from BeyondComics.tv. And please um, stay safe out there. Uh, again, thank you so much for the support. And uh, as they say in comic books, to be continued, please uh, donate to my uh, Patreon, which is uh, link is uh, in the description. Okay. And um, if you would, that would be awesome. Then I could keep trying to make more videos like this for you. All right. Thanks, guys. Hang in there.
on Batman. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Follow and subscribe. Peace.